Uh, certainly the market looking at everything going on in DC, but also keeping a very close eye on any developments related to a vaccine or a treatment for the coronavirus. And joining us now uh, to talk a bit more about what his company is doing on that front, we are joined by Pfizer's chief scientific officer, Michael Dolston. And uh, Dr. Dolston, thank you so much for joining the program in the market. Uh, certainly excited about uh, the news that you guys have revealed recently, uh, moving to a phase three trial with one of the candidates uh, for a vaccine developing alongside BioNTech. I'm just curious if you could uh, begin by sharing uh, with us um, what you guys know so far and, 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 and how that trial or how your previous trials have, have progressed and gotten us to this point. Yeah, thank you. It, it's a uh, you know great um, day to uh, be able to see this trial trial come to start. And normally we used to see vaccine efforts take years, but we have actually been moving from the drawing board in the labs to starting this phase three trial in less than five months. So it is an amazing journey. But I think we were facing an unprecedented medical and public health crisis, including for the economy. So we have basically worked around the clock with a good dialogue with FDA and a lot of advices to come to this moment. And uh, I think we are very encouraged. Actually, it was last Friday we were sitting down, uh, the science leadership together with our CEO and other leadership team members and looking at the data and feeling very encouraged, very proud that the data indicated we had a vaccine candidate that looked really strong in preclinical studies a vaccination prevented primates from get, getting infectious in lungs or airways. Our early human data suggested high response of antibodies beyond what we use as benchmark convalescent plasma from patients that have contracted disease. And we were engaging two arms of the immune system, the antibodies and the cell mediated to give a dual punch to the virus. And on top of that, it looked very favorable safety and tolerability. So very pleased to see that and oft we are now in trying to recruit patients um, in a quality manner and move with pace. Dr. Dolston, I would love for you to tell us how you how that happened. I'm sure, you know, as one of the largest uh, traditional vaccine companies and leading um, among the larger players right now, you've pivoted to this, well, not really pivoted, but it's a newer technology and it hasn't been on the market, this mRNA technology. How is this development different in terms of the process of the vaccine and the clinical trials when there's so much changing information? Simultaneously, you're dealing with this newer technology. Yeah, I think what's really unique for uh, today's Pfizer, and we've been going through a real transformation under the leadership of Albert Bola to be a breakthrough company that embraces new scientific opportunities underpinned by great technologies. So we actually, as a company, had an experience with traditional vaccines using proteins, using viral vectors, and a variety of protein carbohydrate conjugates. But for this particular challenging virus, we felt the mRNA technology had its particular edge. And we have been working with our German partner for two years. And the data told us that we thought we'd had a mechanism and a maturity of the technology that we could move very swiftly. And I think the early clinical data we're seeing is um, really on the top of the encoding side. And I think it will be hard to get that type of encoding data with a traditional approach. Now, of course, there is always uncertainty, but fingers crossed and um, keeping our high quality standards, I feel optimistic that we may be able to conclude in September or October with something that could be a solution to this public health crisis. Absolutely. Looking at the, the timeline as well, um, you know, prioritization of where this vaccine gets distributed and how we know you already have that agreement that 1.95 billion with Operation Warp Speed, but separately of that, are you going to be able to distribute to the general public? And also, what does that look like in terms of price, et cetera? I know, I know there's been some discussions about that it's still a pretty early stage, but what can you tell us about the commitment there? Yeah, you know, the, the way a company like Pfizer is organized is with a lot of internal experience and competence. So we could bring R&D manufacturing and how we reach patients together in one strong dream team. And what we see currently based on our pilot experience in this space and moving swiftly forward in the planning is that we can produce up to 100 million doses of the vaccine by year end 
and then ramping up to 1.3 billion in 2021. And how will we distribute that? Well, we think about the patients in greatest need and we'll work with, in the US, governmental agencies, CDC, to get advice on what's the biggest need here. Similarly, in Europe and other parts of the world, we'll engage with those regulatory and, and public health authorities. And of course, it's about equity access and to do it in a way that makes us be seen as someone that cares about everyone in a fair manner. Now, you also mentioned price, and price is partly linked to the volume. We made a deal with the US government for 100 million doses, an option for 500 million, and initial price is, is uh, geared to that commitment. And we will continue to have a price that will be based on fairness and to volume. And as we get through the pandemic period, which may be over the next two years or so, we may then come into a more annualized different type of need for the vaccines from very high volume to more uh, mid-sized volume, but still thinking about the globe of close to 8 billion people, this is going to be for many years a tremendous logistics, but we are very well trained for that, being, as you said, a vaccine company that served the world for so many decades. And Dr. Dolson, finally, um, you know, Anjali understands a lot of what you guys are talking about. I'm just a regular guy. I don't, I'm just hoping that I can, you know, go out and like live my life normally uh, in a few months, maybe a few years, just from where you sit today versus if we had talked to, to you four or five months ago, how much more optimistic are you now uh, on what the future uh, for all of us around the globe could look like with, with what you've seen, not from your, not only your work, but, but a lot of your colleagues as well. Yeah, of course, I cannot promise, but what I can say is that I was encouraged early on based on our experience, but that encouragement has now been supported uh, with data, and I do feel quite confident that um, we can execute this, and as we turn the papers around with all the data, the digital papers, in uh, September to October, I think there is a good probability that we have something that can be really meaningful in preventing uh, the fear of that you should contract this uh, devastating virus. And I, I do think if we can then quickly move to broad vaccination, that life should return in some form that's more normal than now. And that's where I am today and look forward to work around the clock to make that vision come true. All right, Dr. Michael Dolston is the Chief Scientific Officer at Pfizer. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining the program. Hopefully uh, we can stay in touch and talk soon when we have even better news uh, for you to share. Absolutely, anytime. Thank you so much.